Hey, welcome back everyone, Toysh is here, and I'm back yet again for yet another Spider-Man, the animated series video, and today we're going to be checking out a whole bunch of previously released retro Marvel Legends Spider-Man, the animated series, quote unquote, right? They're kind of adjacent style. Now, first and foremost, in the most recent Spider-Man wave, we have Marvel's Tarantula, and I do like the artwork here. If you were wondering, it's all done by Harry Moore Design. I'll put the links down in the description below. He just does tremendous work. Really a blast from the past. And as you can see, Tarantula right there in the packaging. And on the back side, beautifully recreated. It's that Toy Biz goodness brought back to life. I love these IKEA drawings right here, right? A little bit of a write-up for the Tarantula. Now, another character... Marvel's Rose, right? We'll talk more about Tarantula and Rose coming up. But uh, yeah, these are two characters that were not in the animated series, but Rose, well, kind of, sort of, technically, right? Same sort of retro style packaging. Again, swap out the hands, you get a Rose, I really like that. And you can read up on old Richard Fisk right here, the son of the Kingpin. The Walmart exclusive lizard. Man, oh man, what a pain, right? Glad I got him, though. We'll <laughs> just say, again, really nice artwork. Very cool. Spider-Man 60 Amazing Years. These are kind of spread over a nice, long period of time. But, like I said, we're bringing them all together for this video. Again, everything that you get. Swapping out hands and you get to learn about Dr. Kurt Connors. Now, the Scorpion which is one of my favorites, especially for having to do with Spider-Man, the animated series, right? So gorgeous artwork there, lovely green. This is what I think about when I think of the Scorpion. And you get the same backside, the purple card, the drawing. I love that right there. Mac Gargan doing his thing and kind of sort of talking about the battle suit, which he can and can take off, right? Animated series continuity, what it is. Craven, right? We have Craven the Hunter. He's a Walmart exclusive. I think that face says it all as far as Walmart exclusives, right? On the back side, again, all the same gorgeous retro packaging. And you get the little IKEA drawing, right? Totally dig that. This one is actually Spider-Man the Animated Series inspired for the bio. That's cool to see. And then you have the oversized giant card for the reissue of Rhino. And again, this one having the colors of Spider-Man the Animated Series, which is nice. Again, you have to kind of think of most of these as Spider-Man the Animated Series adjacent, but it's a huge retro card. Swap out the hands, swap out the heads, and you get to read up on old Alex O'Hearn here, right? So very cool. Now, if you were wondering, I did previous videos on all of these, of course, and this is going to be a little bit of a, a segue, right? So, Nuada Designs, shout out to them and a huge thank you. Please check them out on Instagram. They are doing tremendous work for Spider-Man the Animated Series figures. And I just wanted to point out and show off a few of the offerings that they sent over. Now, for those of you interested in the cape and the head, go check out my video on the Hobgoblin, right? But for this... We're going to be looking at what Nuada Toys, Nuada Designs did. So, we have two new head portraits. We got a couple Hobgoblin extras. And we have his flying purple glider. And I like what they did here. They put magnets in there. So, if you put magnets on the bottom of your Hobgoblin, he will magnetize to this board. Now, I will say this. It is 3D printed. I think it looks pretty great for a 3D printed third-party customizer, right? Very cool. I think a couple touches here and there, just a couple, yeah, we could fix this and this. I think you'd have an excellent product, my friend. Now, with the head portraits, and again, I very much appreciate this. I don't know where you begin creating these, painting these. It's amazing to see all the love and attention to detail that went into these head portraits. And I will tell you, they will fit on your Hobgoblin's no problemo. But I want to point out that I think that this is an excellent start. And you should be absolutely stoked and happy to see all the amazing work that you have done. Again, both of the heads fit. But I will honestly tell you, they need a little bit of work. It's not exactly the Hobgoblin. It's a little bit off here and there. A little bit off model. 
but you're on the right track, my friend. I will say that. Now those aside, I will tell you, now these, these are the true standouts of New Auto Toys, New Auto Designs. These are incredible. So first and foremost, from the Hobgoblin's first appearance in Spider-Man the Animated Series, you have his mask. Before he puts it on, before you know, it's Jason Philip Mackendale. It was a bald guy with his back turned to us, and I absolutely love the way this looks. Well done. As is the Time Dilation Accelerator. The one for the spots, or even better, the one for the Hobgoblin. This is Beautifully painted, beautifully designed. It looks like it walked right out of the animated series. It even has a little switch right there. You knocked it out of the park. This is amazing, and this is what I want to see. We've been so spoiled by NECA's cartoon TMNT. This is right on the money, as is the Hobgoblin Blaster. Hobgoblin is known for his pumpkin bombs. That's usually what he comes packaged with if he gets a figure. He's got razor sharp bats. He's got saw blades. He has his gun, the gun that was used to potentially take out the kingpin, Wilson Fisk. They nailed it. New Auto Designs, you should be very happy with everything you have done here. The Hobgoblin, even though he really doesn't have the hands, trigger fingers and all that, you can definitely make this gun work for you, as will the Time Dilation Accelerator. Now I just need a giant portal, right? So he doesn't take off an arm or take off a leg. You gotta make sure it's properly power packed. But I gotta tell you again, thank you to Nuada Toys, Nuada Designs. You knocked it out of the park. I'll put their links down in the description below if you'd like to go ahead and order any of these from them. Highly recommend the Time Dilation Accelerator. Highly recommend the Blaster. And definitely check out the Flying Wing as well. And just before we go, a little bit of a teaser. Coming up, once we have the Green Goblin Mary Jane set, maybe we'll have a Time Dilation Accelerator for another Goblin, right? But in the meantime, we got some Spider-Man animated action to discuss. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a re-retro shiz look back at six new-ish Spider-Man, the animated series adjacent Marvel Legends by Hasbro. And while I got all you John Sepper Jr. enthusiasts here, so I want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. If you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates. We sure do talk a lot about Spider-Man the Animated Series, am I right? Speaking of which, here's two characters, technically never appeared on Spider-Man the Animated Series, even though they're included in this retro card collection, right? So we'll kick it off with the Tarantula. Now, I know Tarantula best from older Marvel comics dealing with the Jackal and then the original Clone Saga, not the Maximum one, thank God. But uh, you can't tell me he can walk around just perfectly in these uh, poison-tipped boots of his, right? How cumbersome. Let's head over to my Fleer Ultra 96 Marvel trading cards, right, for Spider-Man. And, oh, Tarantula's dead. Louis Alvarez. And, oh, so is Craven. Sergei Kravenov. Spoilers ahead. And Jackal. So everyone in this era is dead. That didn't help at all. The articulation is the usual Marvel Legends articulation. There's nothing crazy here. And a big point of contention for this figure has been the blue head wrap. And I'm going to be honest with you. While they do show it's blue, he's got little accents of blue, we all know it's black. It's just how they accentuated comics back in the day to kind of help it stand out a little bit better. Yeah, I would have preferred it to be black because that meant the other parts of his costume would be blue as well. And that doesn't make any sense. Unless you want to do blue highlights, that would have been cool. So it really doesn't bother me. What does actually bother me though, is when you start looking at these pins in the arm. I thought we were past this. Come on now, black pins amidst the red plastic? No problems on the legs, but we all know that eventually, I'm sure, we'll see a black masked tarantula. Even though, I will say this, the blue kind of gives it that animated look. You kind of expect that to be, well, if he was in the animated series, yeah, this is kind of how it would have gone. Extra hands would have been lovely with this figure, as you get nothing with him, and he's a mixed martial arts tarantula master, so a little bit more expressive hands would have been ideal. Even though the costume is painted nicely, the blue, everything looks good, he's just a tarantula, right? Now, with the rose, 
I'm just going to point out that he does come with a ton of accessories. That's nice to see. And he also appeared on Spider-Man the Animated Series. See? Technically, he appeared in Partners in Danger, right, with Daredevil, and he is Richard Fisk, son of the Kingpin. And if you have time, go back and watch that two-part episode. It make a no sense. Now, to go back to my Flare Ultra Spider-Man cards, we have Kingpin, Schemer, and Blood Rose. Blood Rose was kind of like the Punisher version of the Rose. Schemer was also Richard Fisk in a mask, and like I said, he's the son of the Kingpin. Now, Again, he comes with enough firepower that if you want to make him Blood Rose, I'm sure you can do that. These are actually cool. Yes, they could have used a lot more paint, but they're very much Spider-Man the Animated Series, right? Remember their ridiculous blaster weapons? He comes with a pair of extra fists, a little bit of detail on the backside. That's always nice to see. Nice blue going on. And the best accessory, because a guy named the Rose... Well, obviously, he needs a rose. It's a very gummy rose, but, hey, does the trick. Now, with the figure itself, I mean, that's the rose through and through, right? There's not a whole heck of a lot. I like his shoes, his nice spats going on. He has a finger-pointing hand and a gun-pointing hand. And I think that's where a couple more extra hands would have been nice. A lot of companies have been doing finger-pointing hands recently, right? It's kind of funny to point that out. But you can't hold both weapons at the same time. That's weird. You can barely hold a gun and a rose at the same time. So an extra open hand for the other side would have been nice. Same articulation you'd expect. You can put the rose in the finger pointing hand. It's really not a problem. The gun, obviously, either or can go in the gun holding hand. But again, that's where just a few more hands would have been ideal for the type of weapons that he comes with. But it's nice to have the rose and i will tell you this as far as spider-man the animated series no these are not going to add up much to anything but they're good for your comic book line again especially with wilson fisk richard fisk's father that's cool to see even though he tries to kill his father consistently right and tarantula along with the jackal those go together nicely so through and through it's nice to have some new comic book inspired figures but you're all here for Spider-Man, the animated series, and we got four figures to look at that do a fairly good job of embodying Spider-Man, the animated series, like Mech Gargan the Scorpion. This is my ideal scorpion right here. The colors, the big old bendy wire tail, it's awesome. I love the segments in the costume, the segments in the tail. It just really has a lot of personality, and it's exactly what I think of if you say, Scorpion. I go, Spider-Man the Animated Series. Because, yeah, through and through, they nailed it. Pretty good job, I have to say. Even though it's just a repaint, let's be honest. But it definitely works as far as what he looks like on Spider-Man Animated. Even down to them kind of painting these little boot hooks and glove hooks, right? I mean, at least they're there. It's, <laughs> it's not great. But I appreciate just a little bit of effort. That's not too shabby. The only main hiccup is that his tail in the animated series sprays acid, and this one is just a scorpion tail. So that's off in terms of relating it to Spider-Man animated. It's not a huge problem, but hey, you know what? Redoing the tail would have been nice, but I like that you get enough articulation out of him. He could do the whole jumping up and breaking the web lines sort of deal. An extra head portrait, maybe him turning a lot more feral, or even an intercom system to talk to the kingpin. That would have made for some great extra accessories, Hasbro. That's what I would love to see. So, yeah, let's go a little bit more. Let's push the whole Spider-Man the Animated Series aspect. Because people are clamoring for them. And let them know down in the comments below. I know they're reading them. There are fans out there. They want to see it. Let's do a lot more characters and let's get some more animation inspired accessories. Now, moving on, we have a repaint of the Rhino. And it's not just a repaint, mind you. It's a little bit of a redone Rhino. Now, he does have painted fingernails, which is nice to see. Not exactly animation accurate, but this is how this video is going to go. I'm going to point out stuff, but it's not going to really bug me. I do like the new head portraits, though. I think that those came out fantastic along with the horns, the paint, a little bit of a wash to them. These are a lot better head portraits than the last Rhino release. And you get the more subtle head right here, which 
yeah, it does look like Rhino from Spider-Man the Animated, just a lot more realistic, right? And again, that's where the whole Spider-Man the Animated series adjacent comes in. But they got the correct color of his suit this time around. That's nice to see. It's the exact same figure, minus the shoulder pads, but you get the idea. There's nothing mind-blowing here. The feet, now that could use a little bit of an update. He does have regular feet. He doesn't have rhino feet in Spider-Man the Animated Series. So again, that's where the reuse comes in, where I would say those are the necessary changes that people want to see to make these figures, these representations, that much more Spider-Man the Animated Series. But it is a lot of fun to pose them out, swap the hands, swap the heads, right? That's pretty cool to see. Get him in those positions, and he is ready to do battle with Spider-Man. Or go to work for the Kingpin, right? Get in a briefcase with a Promethean X inside. Now, with Kraven, he does come with the same spear that we have seen before, unfortunately, right? It's painted a little bit differently, but the one plus is that it's very reminiscent of the original Toy Biz Craven with his little spear throwing ability, right? Now with Craven himself, that head portrait kind of says it all, right? <laughs> From the neck down, yeah, that's pretty much Spider-Man the animated series. So I give him a little clap. That's what I like to see. That's what I really wanted to see with any type of Craven figure. And third time's basically the charm. Now, one thing I'll point out right here, they got the band, right? You got the black band with a little bit of the red markings. That should have gone on his crotch. <laughs> and I know they could do it because they've done it on the last Craven releases that they did. It would have nearly been perfect had you had that in there. Now, as far as the face, it's more solemn head. He does grit his teeth a lot. You watch the episode. Let's swap the heads. And I think that that actually works so much more. In fact, an extra head portrait in the box, even this one, would have been so much better. And I like this one. Now, mind you, the flesh tones don't exactly match. But can you really tell, right, from this video? No, not really. Unless I'm telling you. Nice articulation overall. We've seen it all before. And then finally, with figure number four, Kurt Connors, the lizard. He comes with two science beakers, right? One's red, one's yellow. We have seen these accessories before as well. You get an open hand and you get a fisted lizard hand. So that is nice to see. Nice wash on the green. And you get a really cool first appearance lizard head portrait. That is nice to see. So that's on the opposite end of the spectrum, right? You have a comic book figure. This is not Spider-Man the Animated Series in any way. It's a really nice comic book head portrait. I'll give him that all day. That is really well done, and I definitely dig it for that. Now, you do have a more kind of, sort of, Spider-Man the Animated Series head, even though this is kind of when you kind of went more reptilian, like 90s head. So kind of, sort of, Spider-Man Animated, but I really wish they would have pushed the envelope there and actually done it so you can see the difference between the two. And if you just simply pop the heads just like that, yeah, first appearance lizard. Even down to his froggy little hands, right? You got a bendy wire tail. That's actually a nice touch. I will give him that. That's really fun to see. I'm glad they finally instituted a bendy wire tail. He's got the purple pants. He has the lab coat. Again, the hands... Not so much lizardish, like in the sense of Spider-Man, the animated series, you should have more fingernails, right? That kind of thing going on. But for this size of the lizard, for this look, I think it achieves a lot. But again, we want Spider-Man, the animated series. So I want you to head over to Rebob Lito's Instagram and definitely please check him out. He does amazing custom works. And he made a Spider-Man the Animated Series lizard head once again, but for this particular body. And I think that it works really well. Now, just as a heads up, you'll have to put a little bit of sticky tack within the head to keep it on the neck peg. But once you do that, it's on there for good. So really nicely done. The only problem I would say though, with this, minus head portrait, which really does make this figure now for me, is one, the hands are not exactly Spider-Man the Animated Series. The feet are not exactly Spider-Man the Animated Series. The lab coat doesn't have the Kurt Connors name tag, which I need to get around to doing. I think that would be really easy. 
The lab coat isn't tattered or torn, but again, that's what makes it the first appearance lizard. That's what makes it cool. He is a little bit smaller than I think the lizard should be, but later seasons of Spider-Man animated kind of brought him around this size. He fluctuates from episode one to then the end of the series. But that being said, the lizard with Rebob Lido's head portrait really does make it amazing. Craven swapping out his head portrait really does make it amazing. Overall, I'm pretty happy, pretty solid Rhino, and a pretty solid Scorpion as well. So it's nice to see very little changes to either of these need to be made. But again, a little bit more effort in bringing Spider-Man the Animated Series to life, please. Because once you have these figures, this is where your collection comes to life. Speaking of accessories for the Rhino, a headset, right? An extra head portrait with a headset. Or the Prometheum X Rock, a briefcase. That would have been awesome. Because when you finally have him going up against the black costume Spider-Man, you can tell him you should have stayed in red because he's going to dirty you up bad. Now, in terms of his life partner, Shocker here, the original Shocker with the lines was pretty cool, even though it wasn't accurate to Spider-Man. And then we have the new Shocker as well. The lines really make the Shocker, and that's what this one is missing. This one also should have been red and black, which would have been really cool. But then again, it's supposed to be Spider-Man adjacent, but it's not to say I'm not happy with it. But at least when Venom takes these two down, well, that achieves a little bit more of some happiness. Now, Wilson Fisk, the Kingpin, can present, well, at least four of the Insidious Six, even though I'm still unhappy with the Shocker, right? But Scorpion, pretty dang good. Doc Ock, that's pretty dang good. And now you have the Rhino. So we need a really cool animated series, Mysterio and Chameleon. But in the meantime, because of Six Forgotten Warriors, we'll just put Electro in there, right? Everybody needs to go back and watch those five episodes as well. Making no sense, right? <laughs> now, again, in terms of Matt Gargan, Scorpion, I really love the way that he looks with the animated series Cell Shaded Spider-Man. I think that those work tremendously well together especially when you have aunt may and peter parker going to the bank to get a wedding ring and scorpion crashes the scene and on top of that you can always crash a wedding but at least the black cat will be there to assist spider-man in taking him down and what's really nice is that he scales well with both of them so again very happy overall with the scorpion in terms of craven yeah i would say that these two go together nicely, even though I had to swap the head portraits, right? <laughs> you can even have a duel of the hunters, right? Have him team up with the Punisher and have him go up against Man Spider, right? Now, that being said, we definitely need a new Man Spider and a trench-coated Punisher, right? In blue. That would be incredible to see. Now, in terms of later episodes, like when they're having to deal with Calypso, which I wouldn't mind a figure of, these go together nicely. Spider-Man and the Lizard. Like I said, this works, but his size fluctuates between episodes, of course. Especially when you get to Secret Wars, which I do think and would call this the Secret Wars Lizard because of the size of this figure. Now, in looking at all of these, once we have Smythe, we will do a full Secret Wars video coming up, right? Now, to show you the differences, you have tattered pants, tattered lab coats. Then you have, basically, I'm fine, right? Maybe, like, he hasn't gone through the sewers too much just yet. But that's where this lizard, again, with a Rebob Lido custom head portrait, really works, along with this lizard. So you can have either or. And I think you both achieve the lizard from Spider-Man Animated. And just to kind of show you what's come before, you have the original Spider-Man Classics Marvel Legends Tarantula. He's got a black mask. Check that out. They knew how to do it back in the day. Ah. Now with the rhino, yeah, with these shoulder pads, it really didn't work. I didn't like the head portraits either. He looks crazy. Definitely an improvement. Same thing with the Craven. As long as you're here for Spider-Man Animated. Because the other two were very much comic book related. But again, Spider-Man Animated Craven, yeah, pretty darn cool. Just swap the heads. Scorpion, in seeing the original release of the Bendy Wire-Tailed Scorpion, 
Well, it's just a matter of time before they did the animated one. And then, of course, yes, you have the lizard, the big old Build-A-Figure, and now this first appearance-ish lizard. So that'll wrap it up for my re-retro shiz look back at some brand new-ish Spider-Man, the animated series adjacent Marvel Legends figures by Hasbro. And overall, with some changes here and there, you can really make these figures something that resembles Spider-Man the Animated Series. Others, you need a little bit more work here and there. And yes, it is fun to see some what-ifs in the Tarantula and then the Rose, even though Richard Fisk was on the show. But overall, as I'll say again, I would love to just see more Spider-Man the Animated Series figures along with cartoon accurate accessories. I think that that really makes the collection pop and it shows me that they are paying attention from what you see on screen to then be translated into the plastic form. But you've heard my thoughts and now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything Spider-Man the Animated Series. And I'm gonna leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food, but most importantly, remember, stay tuned. We got some VHS Spider-Man the Animated Series to look at as well. And when they do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.